I had high hopes for last year's ASUS ROG NUC and came away disappointed. This time I wasn't expecting much and came away slightly impressed. The mini PC market has exploded in the last few years, but the gaming side still has few options. This year's ASUS ROG NUC has a bunch of improvements, first in the looks department. Now looking much more refined and premium than its predecessor, and it's also bigger, coming in at 3 litres in volume to accommodate more powerful hardware. And that includes ditching the H-series Intel CPU for the more powerful HX-series, and this one's a doozy. Intel's Core Ultra 9 275HX, which has a total of 24 cores, with 8 performance and 16 efficient. No extra threads though. On the GPU side, there's a choice between NVIDIA's RTX 5070 Ti and 5080 laptop GPUs. ASUS has provided me with the RTX 5070 Ti model for review, which is a nice upgrade over last year's 4070, now with 12GB of VRAM instead of 8, which makes a big difference in some games. I recommend checking out Jared's tech video on the subject, which I'll link at the end. An issue I had with last year's unit was the price, and, well, it hasn't gotten any cheaper, that's for sure. ASUS sent me a 1TB storage 32GB RAM model. That's not selectable on the US store. Still, you can see with half that RAM it comes in at $2,599 US dollars, while the 2TB model with 32GB comes in at $2,800. Hmm, I look forward to your comments. So what else do you get for the dollars? Well, it has a vertical stand, and there's a giant 19.5 volt 330 watt power brick. On the front of the ROG NUC 15 is the power button, 3.5 millimeter audio jack, 10 gigabit USB-C port, and dual 10 gigabit USB 3 Type-A. Inside it is a killer Wi-Fi 7 chip for wireless and Bluetooth. The back has four USB 3 10 gigabit ports, killer 2.5 gigabit LAN, Thunderbolt 4, dual DisplayPort 2.1, and dual HDMI 2.1, FRL. So a better port selection than last year, which was a disappointment. However, something that shouldn't have been thrown out is the full-size SD card slot, which was handy for photo or video editors. I also think for the price, this should have been the first mini PC to include Thunderbolt 5 instead of 4. To open it, loosen the thumb screw, then push on the cover towards the rear ports, is what it says in the manual. Not a chance in hell it would budge that way. For this unit, a ridiculous amount of force was required to remove it for the first time. I did it off camera, but here's the second time. This one comes with 32GB of DDR5-6400C sodium. There's a 2280 M.2 Gen 5 NVMe slot, along with a Gen 4 X4, but only a Gen 4 drive is included with this review unit. ASUS has provided Windows 11 Home on the drive. I tried using Armory Crate for benchmarking, and after messing around with it, I found no difference in benchmarks when using the Performance and Turbo mode. That was also the experience I had last year, so I just benchmarked it as it is out of the box. And with that all out of the way, we head into the benchmarks. As mentioned earlier, there aren't a lot of gaming mini PCs out there, and we've looked at even less, so some of the spots will be filled in by regular mini PCs with integrated graphics for comparison. In Cinebench single core, Intel's Ultra 9 275HX takes the lead over various mobile CPUs and has a nice boost of almost 18% over last year's best score. In multicore, it's a massive increase, and while the Ryzen AI Max Plus 395 beat it at its highest power limit on the Evo X2 mini PC, the ROG NARC 15 has a 78% increase in score over last year. Geekbench 6 single core gives the win to the ROG NUC, and it has almost a 30% increase over the previous ASUS Mini. In Geekbench Multicore, the ROG NUC is the clear winner, and has a 47% improvement in score. One area Intel's 275HX dominates in is video encoding, a huge improvement over the Ryzen AI Max or 7945HX. It also takes a top spot in the AV1 CPU encoding test, although the margin narrows. Still, a big improvement over last year's ROG NUC. For this next benchmark, we take the top hardware encoding option, which in this case is NVIDIA's NVENC, 
and it's another easy win. On to AI CPU tests. Intel's flagship wins in single and half precision, but loses with quantized to the Ryzen AI Max Plus 395. And when it comes to the AI GPU side, the RTX 5070 Ti loses slightly to the Radeon 8060S integrated graphics for single precision and quantized, but has a big win with half precision. Onto the 3 Mark graphics tests, and the RTX 5070 Ti has a large win over any mobile GPU we've looked at, with a sizable 54% improvement over last year's model in Firestrike DX11. There's a 46% improvement in TimeSpy DX12, and since I didn't start benchmarking Steel Nomad Lite until fairly recently, I don't have last year's figure, but it's likely to be a similar result to the difference in TimeSpy. So clearly huge improvements on the CPU and GPU side with the ASUS ROG NUC 15 and the RTX 5080 model will push things further on the GPU side. So that's a big positive. At the moment, it's easily the fastest mini PC using mobile chips out there. For the game tests, I've gone with 1440p high in each game without any upscaling to show raw performance. Here's some side-by-side -side comparisons with last year's unit as well. Here are a couple of emulators. The reason to buy this mini PC is so you don't need to use an eGPU, but if you really want to, you can hook up an eGPU to the Thunderbolt 4 port with a limited bandwidth available and use a desktop graphics card. Intel's Core Ultra 9 275HX is fast at compiling code, slightly beating out the Ryzen AI Max Plus 395 at its default power mode, but it lost to it in its performance mode. The ROG NUC is clearly beaten by the Ryzen AI Max Plus 395 in the Photoshop benchmark which I didn't expect. However, that's not the case in Adobe Premiere, where it smashes past 10,000 points. A huge win for the ROG NUC, and a good reason why they should have kept the SD card slot. 
The included Gen 4 Micron NVMe SSD is reasonably fast in the 3D Mark storage benchmark, and the temp held up okay with no thermal throttling recorded. The ROG NUC 15 has the best Bluetooth range tested yet, and so it was no surprise that Wi Fi worked fine at 12 meters or 39 feet from the router using the 5G band. Idle power draw has gone up a lot over the previous model, as has the maximum, which recorded as 345 watts from the wall. And just like last year, the CPU gets hot under load, hitting a maximum of 104C, which explains why there wasn't any improvement when I used performance mode in Armory Crate or the BIOS. Maximum GPU temp hits 78C. Unfortunately, Nvidia doesn't show the hotspot temp. Fan noise has gone up over last year's model. The ASUS ROG NUC 15 is not a quiet mini PC under load. In fact, it's one of the loudest gaming mini PCs I've tested so far. ASUS says the ROG NUC 15 takes up 3 litres, and my measurements ended up almost exactly there. It's one of the larger gaming mini PCs out there, and quite an increase over the 2.43 litres for the previous model. Hitting the delete key on startup will get you into the BIOS. Heading to the advanced option, in overclocking, there's XTU support and some memory tuning. In display and video, you can see HDMI CEC is supported. In power, you can set the power mode. As mentioned earlier, I didn't notice a difference between max performance and balanced in the benchmarks. Even load fan noise was the same. In cooling, you can set the fan mode. And that's a quick overview. Okay, let's wrap this one up. The ASUS ROG NUC 15 is the most powerful mini PC currently available and is a big upgrade over last year's model. It looks nicer and feels more refined this time around. Port selection is improved overall, but still could be better. Included is an M.2 Gen 5 NVMe slot, Wi-Fi 7, but sadly no Thunderbolt 5 or SD card slot. It's also expensive. Not much else to add there. The CPU temp under load still hits over 100C, and with the amount of power going through it, it's not really a surprise that it's not a quiet mini PC when under load or gaming. That, my friends, is the ASUS ROG NUC 15, the most powerful gaming mini PC available with no real competition. There's just nothing like it. For the dollars though, I can imagine many would just opt for an ITX build, but if you've got the cash, I think it's actually a pretty cool mini PC this time around. As mentioned earlier, you can check out how much better 12GB of VRAM for high-end GPUs can be compared to 8 here, or check out my review of the ASUS NUC 15 Pro Plus mini PC right here, which is a more traditional mini PC with integrated graphics. Cheers!